Well, guys, I thought I'd change up the scenery today. I'm at my shop. So, uh, the M&M guy will do for today's uh, um, visual. So, what I was saying earlier about, um, you know, after that trip we took in, in uh, over the uh, end of Christmas and over New Year's. Once again, that trip was spectacular. She looked awesome. We had a great time. Constant sex, like five times a day. Beach, fun, playing. She was so into me. It was funny when we got back, just, you know, sort of withdrawn a little bit. And again, hop online, you'll see this is a common thing when men and women spend too much time together. And I do emphasize too much time. So into January, and uh, it's important to know as well that one thing that happened before Christmas is that we had a, it's funny, one of the things that held together our relationship is um, we would constantly book trips in advance. So we had booked this Christmas trip in November, and that was fine. And we had a little couple of hiccups in November, but I think she was resigned that, you know, we were going to go on this trip, so why rock the boat, right? I mean, you know, if you talk to, look at a lot of statistics, women don't start rocking the boat until usually after Christmas or spring like around February, um, when the resigned things can't be worked out to their satisfaction. In any case, we had booked a, a cheap trip to um, Iceland in the winter and um, in February. So that was going to be our next trip. And uh, so bottom line is, is that um, that trip was sort of hanging over our heads that was going to be done in February. Apparently, Iceland's pretty cold in February, but it's a great time to see the northern lights. So, what can I say? So, we had a couple of hiccups in January, and actually, where she was quite withdrawn, and actually, she had come to me at some point early in January and said she needed space, or, you know, she had basically said the relationship wasn't for her. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm no stranger to... Um, some kinds of rejection with women so I have a sales background and so you know instead of withdrawing from her and like that I just basically sold her on the idea of why we should remain together uh, and I'm a great salesman I can sell ice to an Eskimo and um, she bought it but the reality is is that was a continual a continuation of the power shift in the relationship and, you know they say once you lose the power it's very hard to get it back it's kind of like a computer, um, you know, once you sort of use it for a certain amount of time and it gets a little bit, uh, the cash gets full and, you know, it's not, not efficient enough. Um, it, um, it sort of, it needs a hard reset. So anyway, she, she bought into the idea of us staying together. And also in that time, I was terrified after that that she was constantly leaving me. Like when we were, when I was away from her, um, she would be quiet. And in my own, I was constantly worried about, oh, she's leaving me, she's gonna tell me she's going. And when you have that mindset, you are broadcasting that onto the other person, whether you realize it or not, in your actions. And just even, I believe there's energies that people put out. And those energies um, go a long way to manifesting Things you don't like, what you what you dwell on, you get. So, um, yeah, it was a drag. But so, leading up to the mid February Iceland trip, just about the end of January, early February, she sent me a message saying, "Can we talk?" And I was like, "Oh, great, the can we talk speech." And I uh, got together, and basically, what it was is that she didn't want to go to Iceland because. We had had a particularly rough winter in Canada, and she just didn't like the idea of being freezing the whole time. That's what she thought would happen. So in my salesy type way, I said, you know, I knew this was going to happen, and let's book another trip. So we went to the Caribbean again. And um, and, and it was funny because we were able actually to um, rebook the um, Iceland trip. Um, it was a non-cancelable ticket, but for the weekend it was going to happen. There was a an advisory you couldn't couldn't fly out of Reykjavik airport. So the airline actually allowed us to rebook it. And, and it's funny enough, this trip is now booked for the middle to end of August of this year coming. So it'll be interesting to see if um, our relationship will come back together in time for that trip because those tickets are not cancelable. Anyway, back to the uh, 
story about the uh, um, trip. So we went to the Caribbean. It was a great trip once again, you know. When we were together, we were like very in symbiotic unison. We had a similar sense of humor, um, similar responsibility level, similar way of conducting ourselves. But there was just something off just a little bit with her behavior. Um, just a little bit. I mean, it was by and large, it was really good, but we had a couple of instances where we'd be talking in the room, and one of the mistakes that I made, and you should make a note of this, is that oftentimes I would behave like her therapist. I would talk to her about her background and things like that. And I'm going to, in, in later videos, as we pull through these 60 days, I'm going to talk about things that you should be aware of, but really things you should never share. Uh, at least in a way that where you're telling the person there's something wrong with them or that's what the problem is. You can talk in general terms, but you know what I mean. So anyway, um, we had one incident while we were away where she, um, you know, we were, she had revealed to me at some point when she was really, really young, she had cheated on a boyfriend. And I know what you're saying, that's a red flag. A little interesting though from the standpoint that all of her boyfriends, and I'll talk about this in the future too, all of her boyfriends had been pretty... Um, unavailable type people, like people who would, who were, you know, just, you know, sure you start a relationship and then you just sort of hold a person at arm's length. And she was in those relationships, but ultimately all those relationships detonated because she didn't get what she wanted. Um, she didn't get, you know, it's one thing to be treated like shit, but you can only take that for so long till, you know, it falls apart. You know, the, there's an adage to say, if you treat a woman like shit, then everything's going to be fine. You can get keep a relationship. I think you'll have attraction for a while, but a woman will get tired of that because you have to have a, you have to get that fine balance of being a, a bad boy and still making a woman feel valued. It is a fine. It is a, a very fine balance, and that's the price you're going to pay if you want to have a relationship with a woman. So anyway, um, the um, we had one incident. I said where you know I, I we were talking about it and. And she basically just got really withdrawn and, and I can't even put my finger on it, but it was, it was, bottom line is it was a shit test. It was like, uh, you know, she was withdrawn and really I should have said, you know, sweetheart, you need to work some stuff out on your own. I'm going to go do my thing. But instead I stayed and I comforted her and, you know, cause that's my nature. My nature is to, um, you know, there's a problem. As a man, we see a problem, and you know, when a woman's, you know, if we see a leaky faucet, we go get something to fix it. But when a woman's leaking or being a leaky faucet, you need to go away and let her fix it on her own because you can't. There's really nothing you can do. You have to short, sort of show. You have to broadcast to her your higher value, and uh, it's almost it's kind of like a father daughter father child relationship in as much as. You're going to be the provider, you're going to be there, but small little things you're not going to allow it to affect you. And that affected our relationship. So we had one, one hiccupy day where that happened, but then everything went back to normal. But ultimately, again, this had an impact on her overall attraction. If you look at an attraction scale, you know, when you start with a woman, it's like 100%. And as over time, it just slowly, it's like, a, imagine the Terminator and he's got all his gauges as he's looking and there's an attraction meter, or like in a video game, and the attraction meter is going down, 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 down. And you have to, um, it's again, like a video game, you have to get power-ups. You have to get those power-ups that will restore her attraction. And that's things like not passing her tests, being um, a challenge, things like that. And, and as men, we don't, like, I mean, in our perfect world, we would love it. If women would hang around with us all the time and just have sex with us all the time and just be loving all the time. And that usually happens in the first three to six months of relationship. That's why they always say the first three to six months are so great. They're so great for a man and they're good for a woman. But ultimately, when you get into a relationship, you're going to have to decide if you want that relationship to be about you or you want it to be about both of you. Because if you give her all the time in the first part of the relationship, she will think that she's liking it. You will like it for sure. But the reality is, is that uh, it, and it will happen almost overnight. Like that, when you're spending all this time with her, <clears throat> almost overnight she will just turn. It's the mo I've seen it happen many, many times in, in different relationships I've had. 
And so you, that's what you have to decide. You have to decide early on if this is going to be a short-term thing that you're just going to go in and get the goodies and leave. Because if you want a long-term relationship with a woman, you have to be a challenge. You have to be distant. Um, you don't have to be an asshole, but you just have to be, you have to make her work for your affections. Because a woman wants to work for your affection. She does not want you to shower them on her just because you can. So anyway, um, we got back, and this would have been in March now. And then uh, there was March break, and we, had our, we had both had kids. And we get together now and again, and, and it was fine enough. So after we got back a couple weeks, we would have these periods where she would often say to me, I don't know if this is for me, you know, and I would pull away for like a week. And um, it'd be okay. But then I'd come back. And it's important to know that it's funny. You're supposed to wait till she brings you back or like calls you or something like that. And sometimes I would do that, but more often than not, I would wait the week or two. But then I would contact her. And at that point, I'm sure she would have been almost at the point where she wanted to contact me. But I sort of trained her that I would do that. So she would have that missing me vibe going on. Um, but I trained her that I would always come back. And again, that was giving up my power. So, pulling into, um, you know, April. April is going to be our first anniversary. And we just had a breakup just before our first anniversary. And like one of those week, two week things. And I called her in the second week said, Hey baby, you know, I did the sales job on her again, which I knew how to do. And... Um, we got back together for our anniversary. And our anniversary was awesome. We went back. We we basically redid everything we did on our first date. Because our first date was so magical. Oftentimes when we were having problems, all I would have to do is remind her of our first date and how magical it was. And because it was. It was it was the most magical experience of my life with a woman. And, um, and I think for her too. Um, which is also why I think that she will be coming back because... I don't think it's, it's an experience that's, it's really a once in a lifetime thing. It really, really is. If you're lucky even enough to get that. And that's the, that's the thing I would use to bring her back all the time. So I brought her back for our anniversary and we went back to the same Indian restaurant. We went to the, we went to the coffee shop where we had coffee. We played pool and then we went back and, you know, had, had our regular, like every time we had sex, it was spectacular because we had a, I think not only do we have a, um, a biochemical connection. I think we were very biochemically um, compatible. I think our bodies, you know, you you know, sometimes you kiss a woman or kiss someone and uh, talking about your girls, you're kissing a man and it just feels so right. And then sometimes you kiss someone and it's like, ugh, what's that? And, uh, and that's sort of a, I think I read an article once that's a hallmark where your body is doing a little research to, or your body tells you if they're sexually compatible for mating. So again, we had incredibly high chemistry in that regard, but also we had, because when we were together and we weren't dealing with the bullshit of, you know, when you're apart, people start to think and wonder and all that stuff, but we just, you know, our, our relationship was like a comedy show. We were constantly laughing, constantly having a good time, and that's also another thing that kept us, having, you know, in, in the vibe. You know, Hollywood comedians, they hold together their relationships really well. Like, you look at a lot of comedians, they're married for a long time, because I think they have that comic edge, et cetera, et cetera, but one thing comedians also have is that they're on the road for like half the year. And I think that also holds together their relationship. Um, you know, it's a combination of, of that comic wit and banter and the fact that they're what, you know, women want to be with a winner. And if it's a comedian or a comedic actor is well liked when they read the news stories or see the movie that he's in or whatever, women want to be with a guy who's on top. And, uh, and then ultimately the, um, um, that distance really, really makes it. So anyway, um, I'm going to, we're at 14 minutes now, so I'm going to leave this as today's installment. And, uh, tomorrow we'll talk about the final breakdown of the relationship and then we'll go on to some of the other things I've touched on. Talk to you soon.